Welcome to the Aesthetics Mastery Show. Have we got a special lockdown treat for you guys, which is we are sharing some never seen before footage from Dr. Tim Live last year, where I go through a full face treatment. We did a 14 mil treatment. We cover treatment design, the anatomy, injection technique for a full face. So tons of stuff to learn. I'm not used to having an assistant, so I keep do things myself. I have an unprimed needle. Why would I not prime the needle? Anyone, anyone gathered that before? Aspiration, that's right. So I'm looking for every little incremental increase in safety I can get. And Voluma aspirates well. I've tested it. You may have seen the video of me testing it. It works really well. It's a, it's a good product to aspirate with, even when there's filler in the syringe. But if I have no filler in the syringe, it's going to be even more sensitive because I'm just trying to pull back the air. And the chances of me getting a little fleck of blood because just the tip of the needle's in the wrong place, it, it goes up. And that's going to make me, a, over the course of my career, a little bit safer. And every little bit counts. Anyone heard of the case where someone doing temples injected someone's brain with filler? Yeah. So what can you do? The question then comes... So, It's, it's only your personality in the frontal lobe, so you, you still be able to do most things. So what can you do to reduce the risk of that? So the, these things are continuously pop into my head. The, the angle of your needle would change that risk completely because if I angle in such a way that I'm aiming towards where, where the orbital bone is, then I'm, if I go too deep, I'm going to keep going into the orbit. So all that means is the difference between an angle, I don't know if you can see it, yeah, that's great, an angle like that, versus an angle like that, it then changes where I'm, where I'm gonna go if I go too deep. So I'm always looking for little, little things that chip away at risk and make my patients just a little bit safer. So that's one more risk ruled out. Okay, so I'm doing one last check as I always do um, for any pulsation and I don't feel anything. You can see that angle fairly well. It's slightly more superior than it looks on the screen because of the angle. I'm going to pop in and I'm actually at a point in the temple which is furthest away from where those vessels should be. Aspirate, give it a second and then I can start delivering my product. Now the next thing I'm doing at this point is watching my patient for a response. A lot of the worst occlusions I've heard of uh, have been really painful during the injection. So anyone who's suffering I would stop, find another point. Now I'm putting a little bit of pressure anterior to that so that I don't let too much product flow backwards. Nice and slow. Now, temples are a risk because of the size, the volume of the injection. That's why we do the extra steps, which I recommend like not uh, not priming your needle, for example. I recommend you do that anywhere where you're injecting a large bolus. Nice and slow, letting it flow in. I'm actually not putting much pressure on at all. Now, I remember from her picture that she had zero temple uh, before, so I know I can completely correct this. And I'm also remember buying myself the ability to do a bit more work on her cheeks without the aesthetic. Today, if it flows too easily and it's not very, um, doesn't project very well, like bow lift or any softer products it just it may not actually do the lifting we want so when you get a bleed like that we need to hold it for at least a minute having a peak a little bit too soon always backfire always backfires doesn't it? so we'll leave that for at least a minute um, i know from experience that i used to do half to one mil at a time now there are there are occasionally you have um, i've been on these expert panels where they decide like what's safe they we they throw numbers around like how much should you put in one area. My experience of, of that is that there there really isn't any anything other than thought around that. Like, there aren't any cases of people 
putting two mils in and causing pressure that blocks an artery or and people with one mil never having that problem it's just it's just not known so i think what happens is there's a lot of um there's a lot of um uh, of kind of where where you're where you, the kind of realm that you play the volume that you're used to putting in is what you gravitate towards um i nearly always use a needle because i can place it deeper on the periosteum you you i do use cannula sometimes the the slight risk is kind of bogginess it's quite thin skin so you can end up a little bit boggy um which some patients complain about but it's it's low risk so unprimed needle feel for the for any pulse station so it's the left side, sometimes a little bit more painful. But he's got a good pain threshold there. So once again, angled. So I'm going into the little V shape by the bone and I'm angled towards the bone. So if I go too deep, I'm not going to be in the wrong place. Aspirate. That's a negative and then start delivery. So I don't want to move my tip again. Once I've started injecting, I don't want to move it again. I'm also monitoring Lindsay's response to see if she reacts differently. An answer to the cannula question, I, I have done that multiple times, but it's, it's, I wouldn't try and correct the whole temple with a cannula currently with the way I currently see it because of the bogginess, but I might do a little bit over the top um, to kind of smooth something in to get the final bit of the result out. That would be fine. As you get more, and more into this, you do more and more complex versions, more and more layering occurs. So how does temple affect eyebrows? You can sometimes get a lift from eyebrows. It's that stretching effect, which we talked about before. You can sometimes get, um, that's looking better. You can sometimes relax orbicularis oculi through, through expanding the tissue here, and it just releases some of those fibers and you get a little bit of a lift in some people. Okay. So I can really see this is less of a, less of a risk now with, with her cheek. This is flowing more, more gently and I can go on to the next phase. So I'm going to use uh, Voluma now uh, with a, let's go for a long 25 gauge cannula. So I'm going to now attempt to lay the first layer of support for her cheek. So I'm replacing that lateral fat pad. I'm going to put a cannula in and do a little bit just on top here, just, just a first pass. And I'll probably adjust that again later on. Pilot hole, I'm trying to lay it, aim it in the direction my cannula is going to go. And I only need to go through the dermis. I don't need to go through everything and that's enough for me. I'm now in the hypodermis in the fat. So getting your cannula in, I see all sorts of ways of getting it in, as in there's a this kind of stirring thing with a needle where you put the needle in and then go round and round and round. My idea of what's going on there is your the sharpest bit of the needle is doing something underneath and then the blunt bit that's not really that good at stretching the skin is just going round and round. So it's, it's, it's not necessarily that, that effective. And mostly I don't think you need to do very much at all other than just aim properly. Just pop a little uh, little um, swab on top of that. So anyone who's seen me do this before, I, I think I'm unusually gentle compared with many. I really don't like the idea of tearing through to get somewhere. I like to try and find an easy route. So I'm just trying lots of different angles, maintaining my overall direction of aim and trying to sneak through without causing any trauma. And we're right back now. So now I'm right where I want to be. I'm on the superior surface of the zygoma. And this is where, particularly with a cannula, it's very sculptural. I'm just kind of a, little, it's a lot like shaping a, you know, if you're a sculptor and you're chipping away a bone, but it's the reverse because it's additive. But I'm just adding little bits. I'm seeing what the result is like. I'm, I'm checking it, doing a bit more, and just gradually increasing the volume. Uh, this is Voluma as well. 
So I'm also, having asked that question about the temple, I am actually slightly in the temple now because I can see a little shadow from where I'm at. I don't know if you can see it where I can just see the, the connection between the cheek and the temple and I just think I'm going to smooth that slightly. But going back to how I started, I have an aesthetic goal which is I want this to project out a little but not too much for the temple. And I'm continuously referencing that goal as I'm going. I use the, the what I can see in terms of vis visibility of the cannula to adjust to decide where the product goes. As the cannula bulges, I think, yeah, that's what I want to achieve. So that's your lateral projection. Let me do a little bit of smoothing. So the next thing I'm going to do, which is hard of you to see, is just is do some anterior cheek projection. I just know from the, if you turn your head a little bit to the side, you might see that this, this area is projected more f further further forward than up here. So I'm basically trying to get the cheek to project a little bit more like that. And that's part of what will help lift the lower face as well. So with this I prefer to do um, deep and it's onto the anterior surface of the zygoma. You can feel the angle of the zygoma here. So what I'm now seeing in my mind's eye is this alignment with the, with the zygoma, but I'm on the anterior surface. So looking at the skeleton, you might be able to picture that the it's the anterior surface of the zygoma I'm trying to augment. Now the artery, as we've said, it runs medial to it, the facial artery, and then beneath it or inferior to it as the transverse facial arteries. This is a relatively safe place to go deep and touch the bone. Aspirate. And then a little bit of moulding just to shape that in. So now we'll do the same on the other side. Your supporting hand is very important for cannulas in terms of feeling where the product is going, adjusting the tissue as you're sliding in. Finding that easy route. Um, I think I'm painting off on the way I layer the layer the product. I'm just trying to layer evenly and sculpt that shape. It's um. It's, it's adhered, it's underneath the structures, but it's not. Most cannula uh, procedures are in the hypodermis. You can be in deep hypodermis or superficial hypodermis. And it's actually why quite often I do quite like using needles to get a little bit deeper. But it's pretty hard with the cannula, even with your best interests, best attempt to go very deep. So where is it good to be deep? Um, particularly where you might have... Um, a little bit of puffiness occurring, so usually in the tear trough, we want to be a little bit deeper. And I'm going to do a little bit in the lateral or cheek junction just to blend the cheek in with a couple of injections of Voleft. Now these I want to be on the periosteum, so much safer in terms of the puffiness that you might get. It's a better place to have them. So lateral or cheek junction is a really important part of periorbital restoration. Um, a lot of I see I still see people treating the tear trough as if it's a different entity. And you see the, the medial aspect of the tear trough improved and then they leave the lateral aspect. That's um, it's down to a training gap because the lateral logic junction is usually more aging than the tear trough in my opinion. So I'm just trying to get, there's a little line I can see, I don't know if you, how well you can see it on the screen, but I just want to get that little line to project up. That little shadow there is, is really important for um, overall restoration. So. Once again, I'm aiming in such a way that if I go too deep, I'm not going to hit an eye, an eyeball. It's kind of crazy. One of the cases of blindness, temporary blindness, thankfully, was uh, on a tear trough course where they, they missed, went on the medial border of the bone and then injected the, I think, criminal artery. 
So if I angle in such a way that if I go too deep, there's no way I'm going to hit anything other than bone, that's exactly what I want to achieve. So I'm going to go. Also an unprimed needle is pretty superficial. Point zero five might be my first pass. Now I'm going to change angle, trying not to bruise by going through the same hole and going a little. Okay. Now remembering what I noticed about the slight downturn to her eye. I might attempt to just give a little bit of a lift to the lateral part of her eye. Um, but it's this, you can't see it so well on here, maybe on this side you can see it. That little, there's a little tiny shadow just there that if I can, if I can get that to look slightly more like that, it will give her a more positive aura instantly for a very small amount of product. I can see it, I think the light is hiding it, but I can see it from where I am. So we'll do a little tiny amount with that. So I'm looking for little superficial veins. I'm going to enter I'm on the periosteum. Absolutely must touch bone around here. And I'll do a little little squirt, 0 0.05, and then shape that. So first pass, I often use a finger, and then I use the cotton bud. It's just easier to flatten something uh, in a cruder way with your finger, and you get the sensory feedback from using your finger, and then the cotton bud just allows me to roll it in a way that fingers are a little bit less good. So once again, you're looking for those little veins to avoid. This is a bit of a bruisy area. Touching the periosteum. Now some people have a little shape in here and it can look like you're expecting to hit the, the orbital rim and, and actually you don't. And you can go in and hit the eye. So I'm always very slow as I enter in there because it's quite rare, but I've had them where you feel, you feel in fact, Lindsay has a tiny hint of one. There's like a, a little dip in the skull and uh, I've, I've had a couple of patients where that dip is quite basically pronounced into a v-shape so if you feel above and below you expect there to be bone but actually underneath there isn't so that's very important to know about it's not that common but it does happen so i'm just going to do a, a light tear trough treatment just to add a little bit of volume and try and subtract that shadow just just a tiny bit now, going back to remember the slide of all the complexity and the kind of the way that when you start to look and think that way, there's loads of other things that are still popping into my head, but I'm trying to do the foundations first and then I'll, I might come back and do some tweaking to try and add even more simplicity. As I was saying before, that case of the infraorbital artery being occluded could have been caused simply by an angle of entry that was just slightly more inferior like that. So I'm always trying to enter now um, at right angles to the facial plane. I'm also aiming medially because most of the vessels are a bit more lateral. And then where I touch the bone, I should be not in an artery, but we check as always with a bit long aspiration. Have a good look. And then we do a little bolus. Average bolus here is probably 0.2. You can go to 0.3 in some people quite easily. And a little bit of shape. You can do this with a cannula too. I'm quite happy with the anatomy that it's the that it's actually not it shouldn't really be near the artery with all those things in place. But cannula is acceptable. You you will be in the fat though. It's very hard to be as deep without causing quite a lot of pain. Okay, my shaping is just to just to create that the the pressure is slightly medial. I don't want there to be a bump and then a shadow. I, I need this to blend in harmoniously. 
So I'm just just looking at this. I'm I'm looking at the shape of overall shape of a cheek, and I don't know if you can see it on the screen, but when you elevate that up, you you create more of that catch light that we saw in the cartoon. I want I don't want this this to be a have a reflection and then a little shadow and then a reflection. I want I want that to be projected anteriorly. So I'm going to add a bit with the Luma. Um, it's medial to the mid filary line, so I tend to use a cannula here because it's safer with the vessels. We've got two ligaments to think about here. You've got the zygomatic retaining ligament and orbicularis oculi retaining ligament. I want to be underneath uh, the zygomatic, the orbicularis oculi retaining ligament in the little V shape. And that means I pass through the zygomatic ligament once. Just into the dermis, through the dermis, into the hypodermis. So yeah, needles. So I am going to be close to some vessels here, but a cannula that's right angle to the vessel is, and that with someone who's being gentle is incredibly likely to, unlikely to cause an occlusion or to even get into the vessel in such a way. I have tried on, a, on the cadaver course to get into a facial artery with a cannula, and it is possible, but I'm pushing harder than I've ever pushed on a real person. So one of the factors I think that's hard to explain in terms of overall risk is the are the analog components like we can all debate about needles versus cannulas but how do you do, how do you discuss gentle versus rough it's it's very hard to even prove what either one of those are one of our for one of us gentle might be one thing and for others it looks quite rough so but I think there's something around just being almost treading on eggshells with cannulas that will make you safer the downside with an inclusion with a cannula is that you have this far far bigger injury normally when it does happen you hardly ever get into a vessel but when you do it's it's far bigger so there are certain places where i would never put a cannula into a bleeding hole mainly the nose because you might be parallel with the vessels it might actually be the vessel you're going into but i'm going at right angles um to what i think is that's a facial vein that's bleeding If I feel a bit of resistance, that makes me, and I certainly wouldn't, if I pop through anything that feels significant, then I might stop and aspirate again. Although I don't actually think in places where the cannula is very mobile that it's really likely at all that you'll be in a vessel, but it does work. You can get positive aspirations with, certainly with the more uh, easily fl flowing materials, you can get a positive. So it's worth doing if you're unsure. So I'm looking for the tip of this cannula and using that as my guide, feeling with my finger as well. And then I'm constantly in my mind trying to think of this shape I'm trying to create for her cheek. Layering it on, referencing that. And then I do a little bit of molding. The molding afterwards is a, is a really important part of the whole thing. I don't think you can create a perfect shape just with injections because product tends to flow where it flows like it, if there's a low pressure point in the skin it just goes there so now i'm just going to do a little a little trickle in the in the tear trough very low low volumes with a cannula and um, try and be as deep as i can but it will be more superficial than with a needle but i'm not going to put very much in uh, this is volbella which is one i've used for the longest and a uh, product I feel really happy with in terms of tear trough. Okay, so I'm looking for that little tiny track where I can see the cannula is. I do it nearly all by movement. I can't see it when I'm still. And I'm looking for this mobility as one of the safety aspects. I, I don't want to see a tip that doesn't move. And I also relying on the uh, on seeing a little bolus as I inject to tell me that I'm not injecting into a vessel. I don't know if you've ever noticed it, injecting Botox, occasionally you'll get into a vein and it just, the product just disappears instantly because it's, you haven't actually, you haven't, you're not in a, um, in the dermis or the hypodermis, you're in a vessel, so it gets washed away. And that is a sign to stop injecting. I don't like injecting filler if I don't get 
some feedback, some of your feedback. Okay. So look at that. See where the camera is. I'm, tr I'm trying to be relatively deep, but I need, it's, there's very little room. I actually feels like I'm quite close to the bone, but I still see the shape of it quite easily. Little painting strips. I do little strips. It's, it's much more like painting than filling with this soft product. Once again, noticing those little bulges as I inject, that's reassuring. Very small amounts. I can see the shape of it, which is normal at this stage. In total, that's 0.2, so 0.1 each side, very little. Let us know in the comments what you think was the most useful thing or if you've got any questions and we will answer them during lockdown. So thanks very much for watching. See you next week.